a lot of investors right now might be trying to figure out how can I incorporate, you know, my interest in, 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 in helping promote diversity through a model that remains responsible to, uh, to my own, you know, fiduciary goals. I wonder, how, how do you do that? Is it, through, is it through numbers and targets, or are you looking for softer inputs uh, in terms of how you allocate that money? Frankly, how we think about it is you really need to think about diversity overall. You need to think about ethnic diversity. You need to think about racial uh, diversity. You need to think about gender diversity. Um, and then you also need to think about diversity of thought as well as diversity ex of experience and how that all comes together. And frankly, if you do that right and you really think about who's allocating the capital, so those diverse teams, but also who's getting access to that capital, ideally you'd be driving toward uh, diverse entrepreneurs and founders as well. As you take stock of the... Uh, announcements we've gotten over the past month from very large companies, not just grants uh, and initiatives, but actually changing the way they allocate their cash. Netflix was a good example from yesterday. Does it feel to you like this is ephemeral or that this that, that we're going to be seeing this trend extend into the end of the year, into the end of next year and beyond? Frankly, we have to see change. Uh, we're at a place where clearly we have our pandemic. We also have everything that's happening with our modern civil rights movement. And there's actual empirical data that suggests that when you have diverse teams and when uh, you are driving a diverse agenda, you will actually have outsized returns. So there's a McKenzie report from 2018 that shows that when you have gender balanced teams, uh, you'll see 21 percent more kind of above the, um, the average returns. And then when you have racially and ethnically diverse teams, you see 33% above uh, the average in returns. And so it's actually good for business. It's not just the right thing to do. Hey, Rochelle, good morning. It's John Fort. Uh, one of my concerns about how we're moving forward with this diversity conversation is it's, it's very popular for companies to say that they support diversity, but I don't hear a lot of their thinking uh, about their philosophy on it. My concern, companies might be saying that it's popular, but not really believe it. And I think about Silicon Valley and the fact that if you look at the microprocessor uh, development, the development of the PC, the internet, the smartphone, a lot of the companies doing that did not have very diverse teams leading them at the time. And I'm not sure they would, if they were to go back in a time machine, they would change the makeup of those teams. So if the way they have operated and arguably continue to operate doesn't incorporate diversity at the highest level, do they believe what they're saying? So, so you're asking the right questions. And frankly, it has to be from the top. It is the tone from the top. You have to have diverse diversity at the board level, you have to have diversity across the management team, and then that starts to filter through the organization. You can't just give lip service to it, you have to actually walk the walk and you have to show it from the top down. Rochelle, how do you get diversity at the top, especially in the earlier stages when companies are still building and raising money? You know, covering tech from San Francisco, a lot of the times I see that startups often only add diverse board members when they get closer to a certain size or closer to going public. How do you encourage that earlier on? Yeah, you know, so, so there's, there's companies that are actually trying to figure out how to do that the right way from the onset. But you know, there, there is actually opportunity to think about what that board needs to look like, think about mixing it up, think about gender diversity, think about racial diversity, and actually creating the opportunity as early on as possible. But the next level down is also important. It's who's sitting around on that management table, because you actually need that innovation and creativity and those diverse experiences to to drive toward the better conversations. You know, when you think about who you're serving, you're not serving only one community. You're actually often serving everyone, which you know, when you look at our population, it is diverse. And so you know, why wouldn't your executive team or your board actually look like the population you're serving? That's actually how you should think about it.